Hello, more wild adventures here at Bame Farm. Today we will be working on uh, mounting our Ford 601 corn picker. Now, if you watched the unloading video, we had lots of fun with that. Uh, and this machine uh, mounts directly to the tractor axle. We've got two mount points, put a pin through, put a pin through, and then you use the top link from the tractor three point. Now, uh, the previous owner, well, he didn't send us with his mounts to the axle, but he also used a little 135 Massey. We don't have any little Masseys around here. Uh, just three cylinder Fords and larger tractors like the International 1086 sitting around here at the blower. We haven't moved it yet. It took a little bit of work to get it back there. So we've just, we've been letting it run the blower uh, to give us fresh air while we're forking down silage uh, this week. Uh, so here in a second, you'll see our creativity of making a frame for this guy to mount on the tractor. Over here at the tractor, I will be mounting it on our Ford 2810. That picker was designed to go on 100 series or maybe like a 2000 Ford. So the 28 is slightly bigger than a 2000. A little bit different axle setup. Um, and there were a handful of mounting options available from the dealer back in the day even spanning across various brands. Uh, given the age, and we figured the simplicity of mounting this to the axle, uh, we could make, or would have to make our own mounts instead of finding them from the dealer. Uh, so we decided to use the Sway Link mounts, which we've taken the little, the short little pins out for the Sway bars, and we've welded up uh, these lovely boxes out of angle iron. Um, uh, we're not, this it's three and three quarter inches from edge to edge. You know we could have found standard four inch box beam. However, we need 34 inches from this inside edge to the inside edge of the other one, and we needed that extra half inch or a quarter inch from each side narrower. I uh, spent the past couple days drilling holes. Uh, we did that by taking the tires off. I've already done this side, as we can see. It only has half-inch bolts through it, but I'm going to drill the holes up to three-quarters and go a little bit larger. Now over here on the left-hand side, we got the tire off. And we're going to use uh, the hole for the sway link pin. And we drilled another hole. Um, slightly up and farther to the front. I wanted to use three holes, but Dad said two would be good enough. Originally the plan was to take this off, uh, but we found out these bolts are holding on the roll bar are very well in place. I tried as hard as I could with the impact. Now granted it's a handheld battery powered impact, uh, but this guy can save me a lot of muscle. As you can see here, I've had a little bit of issue drilling a hole. I broke off a drill bit doing my pilot hole. So that was kind of annoying. And I couldn't get it out. It broke off down in the hole and I wasn't able to extract the end of the bit. So I drilled a hole next to it with the next larger bit and I was hoping that I could wiggle it by drilling a hole next to it I could take away enough material that it would let the bit loose I could wiggle an awl in there and pull it out. Well that didn't happen. So it looks like I took the grinder and tried to work my way down. Let's see the... The broken off bit was up here near the top side of the hole because I started a little lower drilling. I'd worked my way all the way up to a 5 16 doing one bit at a time, working next to it. Like I was, the, the pieces of bit were still in there rubbing against the other drill bits I was using. But instead of cutting 
with the edge of the blade as you're supposed to, I was using the sides along the edge here and was more or less cutting down instead of like pushing across and cutting off the edge. That took a while. I was making progress, but it took a while. Eventually I had the bright idea that somehow I could make a notch on either side of the drill bit. Now you can't see those notches anymore because I've drilled the hole out, bit, out to half an inch. And this was way down when the hole was only 5 16 But I modified a Sawzall blade. It was, you know, whatever, about uh, three quarters of an inch thick. And I took it down to something really skinny. Uh, I really should have used a scroll saw blade, but we didn't have any of those. And they didn't look like they were any different other than they had, you know, cut off or had much less material. So it was a, a, a thinner blade of sorts down here. So I was able to wiggle that in the hole as such. And I cut on either side of where the drill bit had broken off. And then I took this poor old wood chisel and the hammer was able to knock it loose and what was left of the drill bit came out in pieces. And then it was so great, probably put in the half inch bit, cut through it like it was butter. And before I was like working on a tough chewy steak from a real Texas Longhorn. You never find a Texas Longhorn steak. Uh, Texas Longhorns are extremely too tough to eat. They're a very lean beef and they're more wild than say an Angus. Yeah, you might find an Angus, or not an Angus, a Longhorn Burger, because they can grind all that gristle and tough meat up and add some fat back to it for flavor. But you'll never find a true Longhorn steak. And if you do, enjoy your leather boot chewing. Yum, yum. Well, so I'm back to drilling holes. I got the three quarter inch bit back here. Got to put it in the drill and then we'll get going and hopefully it cuts great. Uh, Dad found a little machine shop in town that would sharpen it for us. Uh, we use this bit quite a bit. If you hadn't noticed, these aren't standard Ford rims. We got these off a of combine. And guess what this bit was used for? Drilling them out to match the gigantic studs that Ford uses. Instead of a 5 8 they like to go for 3 quarters. So we'll chuck it up and away we go.